All right, tonight, um, back to working on the 1972 Honda CL70. That was the project we were working on before uh, we started on the Kawasaki KDX 200. Uh, truthfully, the Honda was pretty close to being done. We're actually getting ready for a cold start, but uh, come to find out, I didn't have spark, so I've been troubleshooting that, and I had to order some parts, and now we're waiting for parts on a Kawasaki. So I'm jumping back on the Honda. So I figured it's uh, a good time I can demonstrate how to check these condensers. Uh, this is the one right here. It's hooked up to the to the coil. Well, it's attached to the coil. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's my problem, but I'm not 100% sure. I did some testing on it, and I ordered a new condenser. This is actually a new old stock one. So it's original. I don't know how long ago it was made, but uh, that should definitely be good. So anyway, I'm going to demonstrate on, on how you can actually check this. It will demonstrate on the one that I'm that I know is good. So first things first. Uh, right now I have this discharged. Uh, this is a condenser, which is basically a capacitor. Um, if you don't know much about electrical, you can kind of think of it like a battery. Uh, it holds a charge, uh, except it it discharges and charges and discharges and charges. It, it it can go, you know, back and forth. That's kind of what it does. So to me, it's a capacitor, but on these old bikes, it's called a condenser. So we're going to go to ohms on our meter. You're definitely going to need a good digital meter. Uh, we're going to set that on ohms. That's that guy right there. And we're set on mega ohms. So we're going to take our negative and we're going to go to the body of the condenser. And then this is our lead right here. It's stripped on the end. I'm going to go on that. And what this is going to do, it's, it's going to charge this uh, capacitor up. You can see the numbers rising. Eventually, it'll go to overload like that. So I'm going to keep it on here 15, 20 seconds at least, 30 seconds. Um, somewhere in that ballpark and just make sure that it's fully charged. And then we're going to go through a discharge, and we're going to see if it fully discharges and recharges. And if it does, then it's good. And, of course, this should be because it's new. All right, I'm going to call that charged. We're going to go to DC voltage. And you got to make sure you're on the right range here. You want the, on this meter anyway, you want three decimal points. So now what we should see here, we should see a number. Uh, don't worry about what that number is necessarily. Just You're going to see a number, and you're going to start seeing that number drop. And what we're going to do is we're going to, get to a certain point and we're going to pull the leads off and we're going to remember what that number is. I'm going to wait a couple seconds. We're going to go back on and we should be pretty much near the number when we took it off. You know, it might be off, you know, a tiny bit, but uh, basically that's showing that it's discharging. And when you, you stop doing that, it's showing that it holds the charge. Now you can see that counting down there. Oops. All right, so it was uh, like 0 0.042. Give it a second or so, and we should be pretty close to that anyway. So keep an eye on that. 0 0.40. And I'll stop again. It was right around 11. Give it a second. And again, we should pick up somewhere right around 11. And this will go right down to pretty close to zero or, or zero. All right, so it's completely discharged. So we're going to go through the process one more time. We're going to go back to ohms. Uh, we're on mega ohms. We're going to charge it up one more time. We'll wait till that goes to overload. And that we'll call that charge for now. Back to DC voltage. Again, make sure you're at the three decimal points. Counting down. 
All right, we stopped somewhere. It was around uh, 0.92. Should be pretty close. 8.5, we'll call that good. That was right around 26. I like to check it twice. Um, give it a little bit in between. Make sure that it's not uh, discharging on its own. It shouldn't be. So we should be somewhere around 2.6. And we'll let this go back down to zero again. And then we're going to test the original one. All right, we're going to call that discharge. So that's definitely working properly. I don't want to charge it and on charge it a gazillion times so we're good there on that one uh now this one here is still attached to the coil so there's our condenser it's basically grounded to the body of the bike really because this will end up being oops this will end up being bolted to the bike so it's grounded to the to the bike itself back to the battery so that's our lead same as we just had on there Actually, that one seems a little bit longer. Hopefully, that's going to reach. Nah, it might be the same length. Pretty close, anyway. We'll make it work. So, I want to take this one right off. We could probably test it hooked up, but I don't want anything to interfere with the test. So, I'm going to go ahead and desolder this because i got to take that off anyway to put the new one on. So, hopefully, you can see that. It's got a little ball of solder there. I'm just going to keep a little pressure on this wire. Might be a little hard to see. I got my solder gun all heated up. And uh, we're going to leave that on there a little bit and let the solder get soft. There we go. All right, so here's the original one. I got it set on mega ohms. I'm going to try to give this a charge. Make sure I'm on the right range. It's already acting hinky. It's either already fully charged, which is possible. All right, so let's say it's fully charged because it's it's not showing us a charge. It's already on overload. So let's go back to DC volts. All right, and let's see what we get here. Again, we should get a number, and we should see it start to decrease. All right, our three decimal points. Yeah, it looks like it did have a charge. All right, so I stopped at about 105. I'm going to give it a little bit, and we'll, we'll see what we got. Right, we stopped at about 45. All 
All right, we'll check it. And this time I'm going to leave it on there and see if it'll fully discharge. Sometimes they get to a certain point and they stick. It's getting a little slow already. Yeah, it's stuck right at about uh, 11, 10. So it's not fully discharging, that's for sure. If I stay on here long enough, it'll probably slowly discharge. If we wait long enough, we can probably get it down to zero. Uh, but it should definitely discharge a lot quicker than that. So either way, we're going to change this condenser out. It definitely should be discharging a lot quicker than that. So basically a couple different ways to know if this was bad if it was truly bad it may not take a charge at all uh, or it may take a charge and when you put it back on dc volts and you get on there and again let's just say you stop at like 0.54 uh, you wait a few seconds or 10 seconds and you go on there and you got 0.32 or 0.22 or something like that um, it's not holding its charge so i'm going to run through it one more time because uh, I'm curious now to see if we can watch it charge back up the last time it was right on overload right from the start. But yeah, it's doing the same thing. Let's make sure I'm on the right range. Yeah. So I'm not seeing it charge back up. We'll go back to DC. Let's see where we're at. I'm just going to stay on here this time and see if we can get this to fully discharge. Again, you can see that it's starting to slow down on the discharge. All right. Yeah, she's definitely starting to stick again. So I say this condenser is bad. Uh, so that, that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, I know it's not the most exciting video, but figure this may help somebody trying to troubleshoot a uh, spark problem. Uh, some people just buy it, replace it, and see what happens but if you do want to check it properly that is the way to do it um, pretty straightforward really at the end of the day you do have to have a good digital meter uh, if you don't have one you can get them I say a good digital meter it's just got to have you know the right amount of range you can pick one up from Harbor Freight or something like that cheap enough but anyway hope that helps somebody uh, we're gonna change this condenser out and uh, get the coil and everything back in and uh, I had to take the motor out to get at this. Uh, not that it's really hard to take those motors out on those CLs. But uh, anyway, uh, look out for more videos on the Honda and the uh, KDX coming up.